Good day to you, child of God. This is the Remnant Seed Bible Study Channel. Welcome. I want to do one today on the Word of God. And uh, I believe um, it to be a live coal, as mentioned in Ezekiel and Isaiah and Revelation. It's a live, it's likened as a live coal. coal. And I believe the reason why is a live coal is actually a, a burning coal when it's put in the fire and it gets a certain temperature, turns red hot, and it's considered alive then. And I think the analogy here given is that the Word of God, sure, it stands on its own, but when it enters into the mind of any human being or anybody that knows it, and they gain a full working knowledge of, of God's Word, even parts of it, they become live coals in their mind. The Word of God is alive in, in your mind. And if you think about it, Jesus Christ is the living Word. He's the embodiment of the Word. In the beginning was the Word. And then in Revelation it says, His name is the Word of God. Uh, the Word is a two-edged sword. It's a slaughtering weapon and a destroying weapon and i'll show you this terminology that's used in ezekiel ezekiel and this is where i get my understanding of my own calling and i use this as a pattern in every ch church that i go in those hot coals of fire are symbolic of god's truth uh, wherever they're at, they can they can be hot coals of truth just floating around in the air, the universe, or floating around in a person's mind. And the Word of God, the truth will set you free, but the truth won't set you free unless you know it. And the truth, the ultimate truth, is God's Word. So once you have the truth just embedded in your mind with a working knowledge of God's Word, you become a live coal, a living epistle for Jesus Christ. And I want to show you these, the, the, this, these beautiful experiences that Ezekiel and Isaiah and then John spoke about of these, these live coals, these hot coals of fire that are symbolic of God's truth and his word in its truest form. Now, Isaiah had a vision. He was taken in the Lord's throne room. And, and Isaiah said, Here am I, Lord, use me. Here am I. And I believe this is a pattern for every Christian. A live coal or fire from the altar represents knowledge, your knowledge of the truth. The truth will not set you free until you know it. If you don't have the Word of God sealed in your mind, you're not going to have any coals of, of uh, truth or live coals to spread to others. This only makes sense. There's certain things you can do without, you know, total knowledge of God's Word, but you're very limited. Uh, in order for you to become useful in God's kingdom, you have to know His Word. You have to know Jesus Christ, who is the living Word. Christ said, For lo, I come in the volume of the book. It's written of me. And this, this process could take a lifetime for you to learn God's Word. Or you could be like Isaiah here. I believe that Isaiah knew the Word of God, but the Lord can also speak uh, he can speak in the Logos form or the Rhema form where he speaks directly to you. And I believe it was a combination for Isaiah. And he was given a glimpse of heaven at the time he was chosen to be a prophet. He was chosen to be a prophet before the foundations of the world, beloved. But I just use that as, as a way to explain this. And, okay, now let's go to Isaiah 6, 1. In the year the king Uzziah died... I saw also the Lord sitting on a throne, high and lifted up, and his train was filled, and his train filled the temple. Above it stood uh, the seraphims. Each one had six wings. Twain he covered his face, and twain he covered his feet, and with twain he did fly. And this is this is explaining these uh, wings 
And I don't, I'm not certain if these are literal wings or if they are symbolic. But it says that they covered his face and they covered his feet and he flew with them. And one cried to another and said, Holy, holy, holy is the Lord of hosts. The whole earth is full of his glory. And the post of the door moved at the voice of him that cried. And the house was filled with the smoke. And it felt like the place was going to collapse at the sound of the Lord's mighty voice. And it felt like the building was going to collapse. That's what this is saying. Then said I, Woe is me, for I am undone, because I am a man of unclean lips, and I dwell in the midst of, an unclean, of a people of unclean lips. For mine eyes have seen the King of kings and, and uh, Lord of hosts. And poor old Isaiah was saying to himself, I'm not worthy to look at this man or even think about him. He is such a righteous and perfect God. And then he, then he says, Everybody around me is the same way. We're not worthy to even look at him. Isaiah 6, 6, Then flew one of the seraphims, seraphims unto me, Isaiah, having a live coal in his hand, which he had taken from, taken with the tongs from off the altar. This is the very altar of God. He took this live coal off of it, which I believe is symbolic of God's word and, and the essence of who God is written in his word. And he laid it upon my mouth and said, Lo, this had touched my lips, and thy iniquity is taken away, and thy sins, uh, and thy sins purged. So right away we know here that it's not a literal hot coal. This is a symbolic of truth, and it was placed on Isaiah's lips. In other words, it it was put in his mind, sealed in his mind. And when you look at live coals, it even has there are many meanings to the word, but it's alive. It's red hot. And it, it can also mean healing or restoration. There's many different words or even, um, even uh, redemption, uh, just like Jesus Christ. There's many different meanings to the word. Okay, and the Lord saw the faults in Isaiah, and he still used him. I believe the seraphim gave Isaiah the word of God in its truest form, and it was represented as a live coal and put in his mind and then sealed in his mind to carry the word forth. And that's exactly what I, Isaiah did. <coughs> he said, here am I, Lord, use me. And that, that's exactly what I did in the beginning of this journey that I've had, beloved. And it's been one amazing ride. It's just been incredible. So I want to explain this. The iniquity mentioned here at the end of the verse is based on his ignorance. His sin was not knowing what he could have known before he was sealed. Not necessarily a sin, uh, but ignorance. His sin was his ignorance, and it describes it as a sin. Uh, and it is a sin to stay ignorant, but you don't have to stay that way. Also, I heard the voice of the Lord saying, Whom shall I send, and who will, I, who will go... Uh, for us, then, then said I, here am I, send me, Lord. And then Isaiah saying this. And this is Isaiah signing up to be a prophet, prophet and answering the voice of his calling from the, from the Lord. Then said I, here am I, send me. And he said, go, tell this people, hear ye indeed, but understand not, and see ye indeed, but perceive not. In other words, you, they're going to hear and they're going to see, but they're not going to know or see anything uh, th that you say necessarily. They're just going to be a stubborn, hard-headed people. And I have experienced this firsthand. Go and speak to these people, even though they won't listen in many cases. And then many will not understand, but the Lord said, speak to them anyway. It's your duty. And this is the duty of every Christian, especially if you have these hot coals in your mind, these live coals. If you know the Word of God, then you should spread it. Make the heart of this people fat. Make their ears heavy and shut their eyes. In other words, speak to them they can't, until they can't stand to look at you anymore, till you're blue in the face. The Lord said, don't give up, lest they see with their eyes, hear with their ears, and understand with their heart, and convert and be healed. Do this until they understand and open their eyes and ears. 
And then said I, Lord, how long? And he answered, until the cities be wasted without inhabitant and the houses without men and the land be utterly desolate. In other words, do it until the end of time. And the Lord uh, have removed men far away and there shall be a great forsaking in the midst of the land. And it's speaking about how they have forgotten the Lord and turned away from him. But yet in it shall be a tent and it shall return and shall be eaten as a, a teal tree, as an oak whose substance is in them. When they cast their leaves, so the holy seed shall be the substance thereof. And now I'm going to try to explain this, beloved. The remnant or the tent will preserve the truth throughout the generations of the coals of fire, uh, the live coals of fire from the altar, which is the true word of God. They have been doing this throughout the generations, beloved, and this explains it. The seed is his word, and casting their leaves is you and me spreading his word throughout the world. This is your duty, beloved. This is the duty of every Christian. It's up to you to carry it forth and understand the spiritual battle that we're engaged in. This is not kumbaya, beloved. This is a war. These are your marching orders below. And Hebrews 4.12, For the word of God is quick and powerful, is sharper than any two-edged sword, piercing even to the dividing asunder of soul and spirit, and of the joints and the marrow, and is the discerner of the thoughts and intents of the heart. And that's what the Word of God does. It is a two-edged sword. It is a slaughtering and a destroying weapon used to destroy lies and false doctrine and untruths that, that are being uh, carried forth in the world today and throughout history. Let's go to Ezekiel 9.1. And he also cried in my ears with a loud voice, saying, Cause them to have charge over the city to draw near every man with this destroying weapon in his hand. Now, this is your marching orders. When you come near to a city, make sure you bring that destroying and slaughtering weapon with you. That's the word of God, the two-edged sword. <clears throat> the weapons mentioned here are the live coals or hot coals, God's word in its purest form. Take charge of every city you enter and teach the word of God to other one and dispel all the myths and the false doctrine and expose it, beloved. This is your duty. And behold, six men came in the way of the higher gate, which lie toward the north, and every man a slaughter weapon in his hand. Okay, now this is the, these six men are our example. We are to follow Christ, who is the leader, the one with the inkhorn. Every man was armed with the true word of God, a slaughter weapon in Revelation 1.16. And they served the Lord and him that sat on the throne. And one man among them was clothed with linen with the writer's ink corn by his side. And they went in and stood beside the brazen altar. And I believe the one clothed in linen is Jesus. And all these six men and Jesus went into the throne room. And these are instructions for every Christian, the instructions they received at the throne of God. Uh, instructions for every Christian, and they are your marching orders. And you get your marching orders by reading and praying and saying God's word and seeking God's word and, and just in constant fellowship with him. And you do this through understanding him and his word. When you're ready to carry those hot coals or live coals forward, the Lord will call you to his throne room and show you what you need to do. Now, this can be figuratively or literally, beloved. In your prayers, he'll answer you and tell you what you need to do right here on earth. You don't have to. You approach the throne of God every time you pray him to him. But I believe that, you know, Ezekiel and Isaiah, both of them had actual physical they were present in heaven physically and this is, must have been an awesome mighty thing but we approach the throne room today through Jesus Christ and the Lord and the glory of the God of Israel has gone up from the cherub wherein he was in the, in the threshold of the house and he called to the man clothed with linen that had the writer's ink horn by his side the man with the ink horn is Jesus represented here as our example. We're led by Jesus, who is the seventh man in this group. 
We should all carry an acorn by our side to record any false doctrine, anything said in the church, being taught anywhere at any time. This means anywhere on social media or a physical church you go to, any groups you attend. You should always be ready to give an answer for your faith and the truth that is that, that you have found and share it. This acorn is your platform from which to speak and write about your encounters as you spread those live coals that are red hot for the truth. And when in your travels, wherever you go, this is your duty. And the Lord said unto him, Go through the midst of the city, through the midst of Jerusalem, and set a mark on the foreheads of the men that sigh and cry for all the abominations that be done in the midst thereof. And I believe this city of Jerusalem literally, but this is to be done in all of the world, beloved. And this is saying, basically, mark those who hate sin and they preach against it. They stand up against it. Um, <clears throat> and the Lord speaks and gives his instructions here. Mark those who hate sin and have seen the way in which people are turned their back on God. Mark them for good when they stand up and expose all the evil deeds being done in the world today. They also cry for the people to repent and turn back to God. And when you stand for God, you're going to be a marked person. And a very, people, very few people are standing up for the truth nowadays, beloved, and you are special when you do. And the Lord wants people like uh, Isaiah and Ezekiel and me and whoever is going forth and carrying the word. He's, he wants us to mark the people that stand for good. He wants us to mark them, a tav on their forehead, and a tav is a cross. They are marked with the cross of Jesus Christ. And to the others, he said in my hearing, go after them through the city and smite. Let not your eyes spare, neither have pity. <clears throat> Slay utterly old and young, both maids and little children and women. Come not near any man upon whom... <clears throat> is the mark. In other words, leave the ones who have already got the truth, leave them alone. They don't need you to speak to them. They're already doing what you're doing. And begin at my sanctuary, and begin at the church. And they began at the ancient men which were before the house. Go through every city and smite them with the word of God, and spare no one. Old, young, Everyone in between, everybody, and begin at the house of God. And this is exactly what I'm doing. Preachers can be some of the most stubborn people in the whole world, beloved. And he said unto them, Defile the house and fill the courts with the slain. Go ye forth. And they went forth and slew in the city. Now what they're doing, this is all figurative. What they're doing is they're going, they're, they're slaying people in the city because they're destroying false doctrine. And they are, they are literally dispelling every myth and every false doctrine with the truth, with the live coals. Expose the false doctrine of the church and replace it with the truth. Expose it everywhere you go. By defiling the house, you're exposing a false house and a false doctrine. And then you expose it with the truth. Okay, and when you fill the courts with the slain, false doctrine is exposed by teaching the truth. Everyone responsible for false teaching will be exposed for what they have done. The slain are the guilty, and the courts will be full of them. Guilty for teaching false doctrine, that is. Now, for the sake of time, I'm not going to read Ezekiel 10. It's a, it repeats almost verbatim um, chapter 9. <clears throat> it's just basically spelling it, spelling this out again for you, what your marching orders are. Ezekiel 9 and 10. Okay, now let's go to Daniel. Then I lifted up my eyes and looked, behold, a certain man clothed in linen, whose loins were girded with fine gold of euphaz. His body also was, was like beryl, and his face is the appearance of lightning, and his eyes were lamps of fire and his arms and his feet like color under polished brass, and the voice of his words like the voice of the multitude. Now we're talking about the same throne that Isaiah and Ezekiel uh, got a chance to see, and I believe that Daniel was taken there as well. 
And I'll let you read this, the rest of Daniel, this chapter for yourself. And this is when Daniel receives the vision of the end times. And this is, this is precious. So this is where you get your revelation from, the throne of God. These are all, would all be considered live coals. Any truth, any pr prophetic messages from the Lord are live coals. They are alive and you are to take them and put them in your mind and keep them alive and spread them, beloved. And that's what th these, these, these prophets are being instructed to do. Now we go to Revelation 8. And I saw seven angels which stood before God, and then were given seven trumpets. Another angel came and stood at the altar having a golden censer, and there was given unto him much incense that he should offer it with the prayers of the saints upon the golden altar which was before the throne. We're talking about the same throne, beloved. This is so precious. Okay, go to verse 5. And the angel took the censer and filled it with the fire of the altar and did cast it to the earth. Now, beloved, I believe these are the, this is right before the seven trumps. And I believe this could, could represent the last time these live coals were, were sent to the earth, to, to the saints. And... They were, they were put before the throne of God as prayers, and then it looks to me like they're being thrown back to the earth, and this is right before the trumps are sounding, which means that everybody at this time has probably been sealed. And how, how do you seal people? You teach them the, 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 the live coals, the Word of God in its truest form. And once God knows that everybody has been sealed, it's supposed to be sealed, then the seven trumps will sound. So, beloved, um, and that's the end of this lecture, and this is your duty. This is the Great Commission. And not only to spread the gospel and the good news, but to spread the entire word of God to the masses. So that with, with the Bible, all the issues of life are taught. When you know the Word of God, you got all the counsel you need in your head. And the Word of God is quick and powerful and sharper than any two-edged sword. And you can use it to dispel all the myths and all the fairy tales and the things that, in life that you have questions for. The Word of God has every answer in it. So anyway, beloved, that's the end of this one, and much love from me to you, and we'll see you on the next one.